welcome back to my channel, A Sip of My Wine. If you're new here, this channel is about all things wine. If you're a subscriber, all 70 or 80 of you, thanks for hanging in there with me, guys. Welcome back. So if you haven't noticed, I haven't posted a video in like two, three months, right? And I get it. I know it's YouTube. I know like you're supposed to be posting like every day or like, every, like at least a couple times a week. But yeah, that wasn't happening for me. But there was a reason for that because I've been working on this project for the last year and a half and these last couple months I've been finishing up this huge project that I'm going to share with you guys and tell you guys about. So please forgive me for not posting but your girl has been super, super busy. But it's all worth it because I finally finished. So what is this project I did? What the, you know, what am I talking about? Well, I started my first big venture, major venture. I started a mobile wine bar. Yep, you heard that right. A wine bar. So basically, so what is a mobile wine bar? So basically, we're just a mobile beverage caterer. We go to different private events, weddings, bar mitzvahs, baby showers, brunches, dinner parties, whatever. We go to private events and we bartend, we cater. And the cool thing is we do it all out of our vintage horse trailer converted into a mobile bar. Yep, you heard that right too. Your girl took an old horse trailer, <laughs> rebuilt it, and turned it into a mobile bar. I'm like superwoman. So for today's video, I am gonna show you how I put this freaking trailer off. I am gonna show you how I turned this old horse trailer into a workable bar to go cater events, cater weddings, and all types of things. I do want to make a disclaimer, this isn't necessarily a tutorial, uh, maybe because I feel like there's so many, um, during this project, there were so many moving parts, right? I, I mentioned earlier that it took me a year and a half to get this trailer finished, right? So that's a year and a half of so much trial and error that you're not going to see in this video because, I mean, it's just so much. But I did get the video down to where I felt like you guys can kind of get the gist of what I did both on the interior to transform it and on the exterior. Like I said, I'm no professional. I'm barely a DIY gal, but I'm getting more into it. Like I'm getting more into the DIY thing. But I do want you guys to understand that this was such a long process. There was so much trial and error. I don't think I could ever display how much work actually went into this trailer. Um, so it's important to keep that in mind. Huge shout out. First and foremost, huge shout out to Scott McKenzie Designs over at Red Dirt Studio and Margaret Boozer at Red Dirt Studio. Um, it's located in Mount Rainier, Maryland. I am super grateful for this community of artists who really helped me push this project and actually believe in a freaking horse trader that can be a bar. Without being around them and just you know feeding off of that energy, I would not have been able to do that. Even more importantly, Scott McKenzie really helped put a lot of work into this trailer. As much as I like to DIY, as much as I like to do things myself, there were certain things that I could not do. For example, if you see, you're going to see a little bit later on, there was some welding work that needed to be done. There was some woodwork that needed to be done. And all of that was handled by Scott. So enjoy the video. If you guys have any questions or comments, you know, please feel free to leave them below. For all of my like construction workers or you know real DIY people, you know please spare me. <laughs> like I said, I'm no professional. I'm sure it's gonna be someone. You should have used a 30 inch wrench. Well, whatever. Um, so yeah. But let's get started with the video. Like I said, like, comment, share, subscribe. Let's do it. Enjoy. As bright as ever, even in the shadows. Okay, so the first thing I had to do was remove those floors and expose my axle. So the most important part of any kind of trailer, anything, or any kind of foundation is your axle or, or your frame. So I'm right here, I'm just removing those hardwood planks to kind of expose it and get rid of all that rust, dirt, grime that's under there. Um, and also cover it with a protective spray to make sure that no further rust developed on the axle. Good thing is the axle was actually in pretty good shape. It wasn't bent. It wasn't broken. It was a little rusted out, but it was actually in pretty good shape. All right, so to spray paint the undercarriage, I'm going to use a rust reformer. 
from Rust-Oleum just to convert the rust to a paintable surface or surface. Uh, Rust-Oleum is a pretty good brand. I hear a lot about it. And then I'm going to take this undercoating pro gray and I'm going to top it with this. Of course, I'm going to wear a mask. Unfortunately, I only have my COVID mask right now, which is stupid, but whatever. It's what we got. I was done with the axle I went ahead and I transitioned over to my flooring so originally I was going to use the vinyl planks or the vinyl planks that you kind of see in most apartments usually like peel and stick um, but I decided if I have these brand new two by sixes why not just use these and stain them if you think about it those vinyl planks are only made to like replicate real hot hardwood floors why use those when I have actual real hardwood and it can actually come out looking better and be a lot sturdier and give me a way better foundation. So what I did is was I took these new 2x6s and I stained them. Uh, this stain is actually a custom blend that I made using Minwax. So I used the Minwax Polyutherane uh, and Cedar and I used the Minwax Polyutherane and Pecan. And I combined them together to make this custom uh, kind of stain color. Um, I wanted something that can kind of match like a kind of a darker cedar kind of look so that's what I wanted to go with um, and I made sure I put two coats of stain on. I figured that since I was already out there, I might as well go ahead and get to the bar tops. Uh, so right here, I'm sanding the bar tops to get them ready for staining, and I'm going to stain them with the same stain that I used for the floors. So the reason I had to send this was because this is actually an Ikea bookshelf that we actually repurposed for bar tops, uh, which is super dope. Um, but the thing about these bookshelves is they, is they had kind of a coating, a clear satin coating on them already. And had I tried to stain it without trying to get that surface, you know, a little rough, the stain would not have took to that top coating. So I sanded it um, to get that top coating off to allow that stain to properly bind with the bar top so that it can actually show. And just so you guys know, I used an orbital sander um, and I started with a 60 grit moved on to the 80 grit and finished it with a 120 grit and a 220 grit. So the first thing I did for the walls was I went ahead and I scraped off all of that rust, all of that chip paint, all of everything I had going on. I sanded it down as well. I couldn't sand it down too much because it's like the interior, but I sanded down the walls to get as much rust and loose paint as possible off of it. And then I went back and I primed it with the Rust-Oleum Clean Metal Primer that you saw in the, um, in the video. 
Um, once I was done priming it, I went over it with the Rust-Oleum regular one gallon white paint. I just wanted a clean light inside. And I went ahead and painted the inside and I also painted the roof. After I finished it as you can see it's like a nice clean white interior which is exactly what I wanted uh, the only thing is in this video you don't see the back of the trailer because Scott took out he had to work on like a little bit of the top half and get that done um, and then we put it back in and we just repainted it the good thing is I think this is a nice bare bones foundation and while that may sound like a bad thing it's actually a good thing because I can always go back and add things like a wine fridge, I have that. I have a sink that I'm gonna add, a beer keg. But I think I started off with a nice, clean base to add whatever I want and really make it its own. Um, and as you can see here, I also went ahead and just spruced her up. I gave her a wallpaper, I gave her some fake grass, um, and I dressed her up for our shoot, and I'm super excited with how the product came out. Make sure you guys tune in next week. I will be dropping the exterior video. Um, but that's going to be super fun. So make sure you guys like, subscribe, and tune in next week for the exterior video. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Have a good day.